So a lot of these international hackathons, just like Hack MIT or Hack Harvard, have applications for foreign students as well. In a lot of cases, they also pay for some of your stay or your accommodation. There are always some reimbursements that they give away. So it's not like you have to do the entire trip for yourself. In this video, I'll tell you what are hackathons, what are the skills you need, and how do you get selected in international hackathons. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. So back in 2017, when I was in college, I used to hear from my seniors that a lot of people get rejected in their job interviews simply because they don't have any real projects to show. Now, the thing is that as a college student, it is very difficult to work on your own personal case studies, on your own personal portfolios, because there's already so much pressure on you. So everybody was very confused as to how do you make these real portfolio projects uh, without having any work experience in the first place. Hackathons is a very, very good place where you can actually sit for a day or two, sit with your friends and actually create something tangible. You get paid for it. You get free stickers. You get free t-shirts. You get free food. And if you're regularly competing at multiple hackathons at the end of your fourth year, you will have at least two to three really good projects to show. Because the thing is, when you're making a project, it's very difficult to pull things on your own. So you always need someone who's probably a front end developer or a back end developer. Second, you're always very demotivated if you're trying to do things on your own without any timeline. But when there's a hackathon, you have a set deadline. You are motivated, there's competition. So it becomes very, very easy to finish a lot of stuff in one single night and have something for your portfolio. So I'm going to speak from a technical point of view because I used to compete in technical hackathons. There are non-technical hackathons as well. But in a lot of engineering colleges, they conduct these mini competitions which run for maybe one day or two days usually happen on the weekends and you stay overnight and compete in these competitions now these competitions let's just call them hackathons have a bunch of problem statements so let's just say that you are a computer science engineer and you go to a tech hackathon they will have multiple tracks let's just say finance education healthcare then within these tracks they have multiple problem statements so let's just say that in healthcare there are three problem statements. Now you and your team have to pick one problem statement, then make a prototype or some sort of MVP to solve that problem statement. Now throughout the event, you're in this closed venue. Usually they book like this big hall and all teams compete there. You sleep there, you code there. And when you're done coding, they usually have a pitching round at the end of every hackathon. So next morning, you would have a panel of judges come in where you'd have to pitch them your product. So you get around one or two minutes to pitch what you've made and tell them about your tech stack. Now, it might sound very boring as I talk about it, but trust me, in that one room, there is immense opportunity. There is so much to learn. There are so many people around to help you. And in that environment, right, when you're competing, when you're with your people and your friends, the amount of stuff that you learn in one single night exceeds what you would learn in 15 days. I am actually a living proof of the fact that whatever it is that I know, it all started from hackathons. It was through hackathons that I kept meeting more people. And that is how I started winning a lot of hackathons in my college and eventually got the confidence to apply for Hack MIT and Hack Howard. We'll talk about their applications in the second half. Now, the next question is what all do you need? What all skill sets do you need? See, in every team, you need at least three skill sets. You need a designer, you need a front-end developer and a back-end developer. If you don't know what these things are, Google them. If you want to become a front-end developer, designer, back-end developer, not sure where to learn from. In fact, I have a very good friend, Ishan Sharma. He has a YouTube channel. He keeps making videos, sharing the best resources out there. Trust me, just go to his YouTube channel, watch his videos. You will have ample of resources to get started. Once you're slightly good at what you do, you have to figure out what all are the skills that I'm missing. So if you're a front-end developer, you probably need someone who does design and back-end. If you don't have a back-end engineer, then your product is just a dummy product. If you don't have a front-end engineer, then how will people interact with the UI? And if you don't have a designer, it's going to become very difficult for you to make your pitch decks and simply, you know, make things look more presentable and aesthetic. Now, the question is, where do you find hackathons? There are some specific websites that I want you to check out and they would include both international and Indian hackathons as well. The first website, which is absolutely, in my opinion, the 
best website out there is for major league hacking mlh.io this website covers hackathons from all around the world both virtual and in person so it's not necessary that every hackathon is going to happen in person you can participate in virtual hackathons as well and this is where you can check out international hackathons and fill in their applications so a lot of these international hackathons just like hack mit or hack harvard have applications for foreign students as well. So as an Indian student, you can very easily fill up these forms. They ask you for your GitHub repo if you're a developer. They ask for your portfolio if you're a designer. Basically, you have to show that you know what you're doing. They always have this SOP, a statement of purpose, where you tell them why do you want to compete. In a lot of cases, they also pay for uh, some of your stay or your accommodation. There are always some reimbursements that they give away. So it's not like you have to do the entire trip for yourself. In fact, if you are in a college, there's a huge chance that your college has a lot of grants. So go to your college, ask the dean if they have some grants available for students who are representing their college in international hackathons. Maybe you can get some sponsorship from your college as well. So half of the cost can be given by college. Some costs can come from the reimbursements and then the remaining you can pitch as well. But trust me, the experience is absolutely worth it. You will learn a lot when you compete in these international hackathons. Now, if you're outside college, even then you can participate in these hackathons. So a lot of hackathons have an age restriction. But if you go to hackerearth.com, you will find a lot of of hackathons where they actually give job openings so when you go to this website they have this filter on the right side if you check on hiring challenges you will actually see some of these uh, online hackathons and challenges happening where if you solve the challenge you not only get paid but you also get a new job now you don't realize how powerful this is because now you can sit in your house show them that you're really good at what you do and get paid and get more opportunities and if you're in college probably travel and see all these big, big colleges. For example, in my case, I was very fortunate that I had an opportunity to go and visit MIT for the very first time. I had always just heard about that place. But because of Hack MIT, I could go to MIT and be in a team with other MITans and actually build something really cool. In fact, if you want to see what I designed at both Hack MIT and Hack Harvard, you can check out our project. So everything that we made is on this website called dev post so in both of these hackathons as soon as we were done making and designing our entire project we were supposed to upload our tech stack our details our pitch on this website called dev post so i will paste the link in description you can see both of my projects right there you will see what we made how did the design look like you will see uh, how clunky some of my designs looked back then uh, but you know it's a process right it's not like you will do really good work on day one itself but the important thing is to step out to go out as a college student see what the world is up to and make the best of all the opportunities that the internet can give you in fact i made this video just to introduce the concept of a hackathon because in the next set of videos i will be sharing my detailed experience of being at hack mit there's going to be a video on hack howard as well there's going to be a video on the micro Microsoft Imagine Cup as to how I got selected, what all did I learn, what did we make, what are the things that I experienced, everything in detail so that you get inspired and apply for these hackathons, go out, figure out how you can make it there and trust me, you will have an amazing time. You will return back very, very inspired and trust me, it all begins with setting up your mind, right? Like if you decide that I want to do this, things will work out. Right? You will figure out how to pay for it. You will figure out if your college can fund you or you can get some kind of reimbursement. But in your college days, if you have these experiences, they will really, really shape you in not just your skills, but even your network. I've met some very smart people in each of these hackathons. In fact, I had this laptop back in college uh, where I used to put stickers. So every time you go to these hackathons, you get a lot of stickers, a lot of t-shirts. So I had this laptop and it was filled with stickers. It was like this badge of honor, right? Like it felt like certificate kids to us. So yes, if you're here for the first time, my name is Ansh Mehra and I create content around AI, design and technology. We've been creating some very cool videos on chat GPT as well as mid journey. In fact, we've been creating videos on prompt engineering, on social media growth and a lot of other interesting stuff. Apart from that, if you want to learn design, we have a free course on UX design. It's a 15 video course available in both Hindi and in English that will take you through the basics of UX design from absolute scratch. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon and comment your reviews. In fact, if you're on Instagram, connect with us on at the rate anshmara.work. I love it when you people put stories on Instagram. I absolutely appreciate and acknowledge every single story that you put on Instagram. With that being said, I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dose Anshmara signing out.
If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.